What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. I think you'll be interested in this case. I call it the case of the two little country girls. And it came to my attention not too long ago when I was about to go to lunch. I didn't steal anything. Not much you didn't. $15,000 worth of our guest's property, that's all. Hold it, you two. You ain't fighting the case here. Are you making the complaint, mister? I most certainly am. My name is Harvey Edward Anderson. I'm assistant manager of the Moore Park Hotel. I've got a list of everything this man stole from those two young girls itemized right here. Mink coat, jewelry. That ain't nylon, nylon sir, I didn't. Will you two pipe down so I can... Oh, excuse me, Captain. These two citizens are giving me a rough time, but... That's all right, Sergeant. What's this about two little girls and a hotel? This bellboy... Ah, uh, this ain't nothing for the bunco detail, sir. Just an open and shut case of grand larceny. Mm, I'm not so sure. Let me talk to these men in my office, will you, Sergeant? Well, uh... Why, uh, why sure, Captain, sure. Thanks. Gentlemen. These are the girls whose things were stolen? Yeah, they're the ones. The Denning sisters, Joanne and Julia. Their name isn't Denning and they're not sisters. They're a couple of confidence women, smartest in the business. Con women? Yeah. Oh, come now, Captain, there must be some mistake. I'm not a fool. I know honest people when I see them. Do you? Let's see. Now, I want to start right at the very beginning. Ten to one, this whole thing started with a phone call, didn't it? Why, yes. How did you know? From the girl's mother. Yes, I was walking by the desk one afternoon. Uh, uh, Mr. Anderson, a call for you long distance. Uh, Mrs. Denning from Oklahoma City. Mrs. Denning? Mr. Anderson speaking. May I serve you? Yes. Oh, yes, Mrs. Denning. I believe we do have a reservation for your two daughters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, naturally, Mrs. Denning, this hotel always tries to give its guests the very best of service. Naturally, you had no way of knowing that you weren't talking to Mrs. Denning at all. And the call wasn't coming from Oklahoma City, but from a cheap hotel room across town. Uh, goodbye. Ducker. You were marvelous, my dear, but then you always are. Oh, thank you so much. You know, if I wasn't afraid of losing you, I'd say you'd try for the stage. Keep that up and I will. Hey, 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 you better cut that out, baby face. We're gonna go to work in two days. Don't worry about me. I'm so thrilled with being in New York. I could just die. Yes, and I hope we won't be any trouble to you, Mr. Anderson. But you see, we've never been away from home before. <laughs> hey, cut that out, you two, will you? You'll have me believing you're the Denning sisters. Oh, who needs the stage? This pays a lot better. Everything all set, Tony? Just do your stuff, and I'll take care of all the rest. To the Denning sisters of Oklahoma and their little sojourn at the Moore Park Hotel. Thank you. And, uh, something for you. You're the Denning girls. You must be. That's right. I'm Julia, and this is my sister, Joanne. How do you do? Hello. Uh, Mother said there'd be a Mr. Uh... Anderson, to make certain your stay with us will be enjoyable in every way. I have two lovely rooms I've been saving just for you. Now, I want you to be exceptionally careful with the ladies' things. Uh, the Mrs. Denning from Oklahoma. I'm putting them in 1907. <laughs> this way, please. The 
other room just like this. Flowers, too. Connecting bath. And stall shower, of course. I'm so thrilled with New York, I could just die. Home was never like this, Mr. Anderson. I imagine you must have quite a place in Oklahoma City. It's not very big, as ranches go. Daddy leased off most of it this spring to the McKinnon interest. We just have the original 87,000 acres now. They found more oil. Oh, yes, I know how it is. I knew the minute I saw you girls, you were from a fine family, and your mother... Anything thought... you want, miss, just to pick up the phone. I'll, uh, ask for you. Thank you, miss. Thank you. Run along now, boy, run along. Yes. Oh, I wish you would address all requests to me personally, Miss Denning. I promised your mother, you know. Oh, of course, Mr. Anderson. Now, is there anything I can do, anything at all? Oh, perhaps a little pick-me-up after the long trip. Compliments of the house, naturally. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Anderson. But we don't drink. Oh, yes, I, I'm terribly sorry. Well, you've been very kind, Mr. Anderson. The flowers and everything. Mother will be delighted, I'm sure. Oh, my pleasure. Now, remember, anything at all, just ask for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Wow, this one's going to bust his leg trying. Yes, I'm afraid that Mr. Anderson is in for quite an experience. And now let's follow up the case of the two little country girls. You can see there wasn't any reason in the world to suspect those girls, Captain. Yeah, they were high class and tippers. Part of the game. And, uh, who saw them next? I did, sir. They called for a boy, and I... Well, I happened to be up. Well, I made sort of an arrangement with the bell captain. You... Uh, go ahead, Jimmy. Well, it was the next morning, sir. <sighs> what a setup. Oh. Just a minute. Come in. Sure, it was the maid. I suppose you would have seen a lot more in a bathing suit. I, I guess so. My sister and I. Oh, I don't believe I know your name. J J Jimmy, ma'am. Jimmy. My sister and I want to do some shopping while we're here for our trip. You'd know the best stores. Uh, both ways from the five and ten. Where's the best place for furs? DeMarco, very high class, but they soak you. As long as it's the best. What about Jules? The Talbot and Company. Holchester's good, too. DeMarco's, Talbot and Company, and Holchester's. Oh, we'll need some suits and dresses, too. Is there a designer? Well, uh, Mrs. Leland, her husband owns this hotel. She goes to... <gasps> Wait a minute, Julia. I was just asking Jimmy about the shop. Uh, I'd better come back later. Oh, no, please. My fault. Did you uh, tell him about the packages, Joe? Oh, yes. Jimmy, when our packages come, would you bring them up here yourself? Instead of someone we uh, don't know. Oh, I'll keep an eye out for him, you bet. Thank you, miss. I'll see that everything's taken care of. Call Tony, tell him we're ready to roll. Oh, and wear your beige with the picture hat. It'll knock Anderson right on his kisser. May we see Mr. Anderson, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Some very important work, personal papers of Mr. Leland, who owns the hotel. I hope you'll forgive me. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Mr. Anderson. Oh, you're very kind. Now, what can I do for you? Taxi cab? Direct you somewhere? Well, we're going to do a little shopping, Mr. Anderson, and I, uh, I just hate to carry all this money around. Why, shouldn't you have bought traveler's checks? Traveler's checks? Why? Why, well, this is a big city, and what with the possibility of hold-ups and so forth, it's dangerous to carry such large sums of money. Yes, maybe you're right. Well, you'll hold it for us, won't you, Mr. Anderson? Why, there must be $10,000 here. Fifteen. Oh, I couldn't keep it, Miss Denning, really, but the hotel provides a safe deposit box you could use. Oh, well, that would be just fine. Yes, uh, keys to a box, Mr. Courtney, and quickly, please. Yes. Will you step this way, please? Two 
key? Oh, yes, you get one and we keep one, so neither of us can open the box without the other. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, would it be all right if I charged a few things to our hotel bill? Oh, I'm afraid that wouldn't be possible. Not that we aren't completely certain that the bill will be paid, but no hotel in our association is... Well, then, Mr. Anderson, I think we'd better take some of that money with us. About uh, five, I'd say. Oh, five dollars? Five thousand. I'm going to get a mink coat. Oh, five thousand. Oh, yes, of course. Why, how dull of me. <laughs> there you are. Your key, so you have nothing at all to worry about. I don't know, Mr. Anderson. After all your talk about hold-ups, a couple of girls carrying $5,000? Mm, yes, maybe she's right, Mr. Anderson. Would you hold this for us, Mr. Anderson? Now, please, just until our coat comes, COD. Oh, but I couldn't, Miss Denning, really. Please. Oh, well, all right. And I'll take very good care of it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye. Had a little trouble in some spots, but I got them all. Talbot and Company, Hall Chester's, and here's where I had to really use the old noodle. DeMarco, furs of distinction. Nice going, Matt. DeMarco, furs of distinction. Well, come on, let's see you get a little fur of distinction into that thing. Guaranteed genuine wild mink, madame. That'll be $5,000. Oh, well, that's very nice. I think I'll take it. Would you wrap it up, please? Oh, by all means, madame. But we don't accept packages at the desk. Take it around to the service entrance. This is a COD, mister. I don't care if it's X, Y, Z. It goes through the service entrance. I don't know. They gave me orders to deliver it to the desk. COD. Oh. Oh, for Miss Denning. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, what? Did I hear you say Miss Denning? A COD from DeMarco's. Courier. Well, yes, of course. Four thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars and thirty-two cents. Yeah. Must be a nice coat. I could live on that kind of dough for seven years. Yes, front, front, boy. Front. Oh, there you are. Look, I want you to take very good care of this until Miss Denning returns and then bring it to her room. It's very valuable. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Yes, well, it looks like I'll have to hire a bookkeeper if this keeps up. I... Save that for Miss Denning. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Well, <clears throat> here it is. Everything go all right? Like rolling in roses. Say, you really got something in that guy Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, something a little extra for you, boy. Could use. See ya. Well, so far, so good. Like rolling in roses. Hey, you guys better get back to the hotel. Oh, that's right. We well, don't want to worry that nice Mr. Anderson. I'm just dying to try on my new mink blanket. <laughs> <laughs> when they got back to the hotel, I brought up the coat. But you said there wasn't any coat in the box. It sure looked like the real thing, at least from the outside. That's the way it is with grifters. Everything looks real from the outside. Hey, Captain, you'll have to excuse me. I'm upset. I don't understand. It... Wasn't a fur coat? They got their own money back? I, I'm all confused. Uh, go on and you'll see. Well, it happened like that all through the week. They left money with me. Packages came COD from jewelry shops, department stores, a dress designer. With nothing of any value in any of the boxes. Then they should have been about ready to check out, right? Yeah, it was Saturday morning. They called for me to pick up their bags. Good morning, Jimmy. I sure hate to see you girls go. Not on account of all the tips, of course. Of course. Come on, Julia, we'll be late. I'll have a cab already. Oh, thanks, Jimmy, but a business partner of Dad's just got into town. He's driving us to the boat. Oh, sure. The car will be out front at 11 o'clock sharp. You'll be able to have all these things out in front of the hotel by that time, won't you? 11 sharp, Miss Denning, you bet. Can you manage all these things by your little old self, Jimmy? Oh, I've got a little hand truck outside. We'll go downstairs now and pay our bill. Yes, and say goodbye to that nice Mr. Anderson. See you out front, Jimmy. Eleven sharp. On the button, Miss Denning. There you are, my dear. And every cent accounted for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
And there you are, Mr. Anderson, to cover our bill for the week. Oh, but that leaves you with so very little money. Uh, we phoned Mother yesterday, and she's going to send us another 15000 for the trip. Oh, oh, I see. Well, you be careful with all that money now. Yes, if it ever gets here. We phoned the telegraph office. They said it was on its way over. I'll just die if we miss that boat. Oh, we have some time yet. Oh, Mr. Anderson, I told Mother about you. You did? She let me in on a little secret. A little secret? She's sending you a present for being so nice to her. Oh. Quite a present, too. Wait till you see it. Well, now she didn't have to do that. <laughs> Want a cab, Jimmy? Well, no thanks, Scotty. I think this is it. I'm picking up the Dunning girls. Are they ready? Right inside, sir. Saying goodbye to the manager. We haven't too much time. Is that their luggage? Yes, sir. Perhaps you better start putting it in the car. Save time. All Get right. Get the sir. boxes, Jim. There you are. I'm gonna miss that boat. Will you tell the girls I'm waiting? Tell them to please hurry. Yes, sir. Hey, will you find out what's happening in there? Yes, sir. Wait. Give this to that bellboy, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, what could have happened to that messenger boy with our money? I'll phone the telegraph office again. It's no use. They said he already left. Your car's waiting, Miss Denning. Oh. Jimmy, you didn't leave our things out on the sidewalk, did you? Well, no, ma'am. Sir, I put them all in the car. A gray convertible. Well, no, a gray sedan. Gray sedan. Didn't Mr. Mason say he was coming for us in a gray convertible? Yes, he said he was going to leave the top down so we could see the sights. Jimmy, you must have put our things in the wrong car. I'm worried. Come on, let's find out. Now, where's our car, Jimmy? I don't know. Hey, Scotty, what happened to that car? Don't know. The man sent me in after you. Our things have been stolen. How many times have I told you never oh, to... Wait a minute, there must be some mistake. There certainly is. Well, maybe the convertible broke down and your friend... There's our car now. Mr. Mason, all our things are gone. What happened? The bellhop put them in the wrong car and it drove off. You idiot, you fool. Well, wasn't anyone here when the car drove off? Who saw him last? I guess I did, sir. The man sent me inside and gave me this to give to Jimmy. It says Jimmy... Is that you? Yes, sir. Jimmy, meet me at Max's instead of the old place. Meet him? But what's that mean? I'll tell you what it means. This bellboy and the man who drove the car are thieves, working together to steal your guest luggage. You thief! Well, this is crazy. I never saw the guy before in my life. Why, how can you lie like that? Let him alone. This is your responsibility, you know, and the hotels. And if I know Mr. Denning, he'll sue you for plenty. You told Mother you'd take care of her. <laughs> Come on, girls. Let's get in quick. We've just got time to make the boat. But we have no money. Mother's wiring us some, but it hasn't arrived yet. The messenger is on his way. Well, you go on and get aboard. I'll wait here and rush it down to you. Try to hold the sailing for just a few minutes. But we don't know the way. Go on. It's just across town to the West Side Highway. You can't miss it. You'll go straight down to the pier. Now hurry. Oh, this is a fine mess you've got those poor girls into. Oh, look. The messenger. He's here. A uh, telegram for Miss Denny. Is it a telegram for Miss Denny? That's right. She here? No, but I'll take it. I mean, he'll take it. Uh-uh. Wires with money in them go only to the addressee. She's right. But the girls, they've gone to the boat. This man is a friend, a close friend. Sorry, mister. It's got to go back to the office. Well, son, here's something for your trouble. I'll have the girls get in touch with your office when they return. Yes, sir. Those poor girls. Something's got to be done about it, and quick. Yes. Come on, let's go into your office. Now, what do you want me to do? Look, the hotel's insured against losses like this, isn't it? Well, yes, every cent will be paid back. But I've got to get them the money now. A hotel like this must have some cash on hand. You can give me enough money to cover the losses and collect from the insurance company. I suppose so, but I don't know how much they lost. Miss Denning told me on the phone you accepted everything COD. You must have kept some sort of a record. Oh, so I did. I have it right here, everything itemized. Uh, Mr. Courtney, 
Bring me all the cash you have on hand, and quickly. Let me see now. Hello, this is Mr. Mason. I'm talking for the manager's office. Will you tell the doorman to get me a taxi cab at once? Thank you. This is all we have. Fortunately, I went to the bank this morning. Yes, very fortunately. It comes to very near $15,000. And here we are, sir. $15,000 even. Well, thank you very much. I'll have the girls get in touch with you just as soon as they arrive in Paris. You can send the insurance claim papers for them to sign. Yes. Well, I hope I still have time to make that vote. Oh, I do hope so, thank sir. Thank you very much indeed. You've been most cooperative. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, and now we'll deal with you. Call the police. But I didn't have anything to do with it, Mr. Anderson. No, well, we'll soon find out about that. I'd heard Anderson's story, and I'd heard Jimmy's story. But I had a few things I wanted to say, too. That's it, Captain. Fifteen thousand dollars of the hotel's money gone. And my job, too. I'm sorry, Jimmy, I was a fool. I guess you were a fool, Mr. Anderson, but... I think you've learned a lesson, both of you. Yes, sir. But how can I tell in the future? You said yourself all those people look like the real thing. Well, it isn't easy to spot people playing a confidence game, but it is easy to know yourself. Look at yourself and you'll see why you were taken in, why you were sort of blinded. Yeah. With me, it was those big tips. I guess I couldn't see anything but those big tips. The same thing goes for me too, Captain, that gift their mother was going to send me, and I really thought it was going to be a big one. Well, we'll get to work on it right away. And I think we'll be able to pick up those two girls and the men who were working with them before they have a chance to spend any of that money. I hope so, Captain. I hope so. And how will I ever be able to thank you? By keeping your eyes open. Then you'll be able to spot the genuine article when you see it, and you won't be trapped again. Thank you. Well, fortunately, we did pick up the two little country girls and the men who worked with them. Even the delivery boy and the phony telegraph messenger. And the hotel got its money back. But don't think that hotel managers are the only ones who get into jams like this. Bunko artists, and they're artists all right, are ready to work on anybody, rich and poor. Anywhere from a dollar on up into thousands. Remember, it could happen to you. Well, I hope I've been able to give you some idea of how the con man operates in actual cases. The fact is, you'll find con men almost any place. From the scrubbiest parts of town all the way up to the playgrounds of the social set. And in each case, they manage to fit right into the background they're working against. And when you tell a sucker that he's been swindled, most of the time, he won't even believe it. But finally, when the truth does sink in, he says, but how was I to know he didn't look like a con man? Well, they never do. Or they wouldn't be in the business very long. Now, can you tell a con man when you see one? Is there any way? No, because he looks just like anybody else. The con man uses only what nature gave him, his brain, charm, an ingratiating manner, and an understanding of human nature that would do justice to a professor of psychology, believe me. Let's face the facts. No one's going to give you something for nothing. Investigate before you invest. Don't be a sucker for these criminals who are so confident they can fool anyone, even you. <laughs> 